Hello everybody, this is Craig from Nine Ball Games and today, I think that cut off the beginning. Today I'm going to do a video that was requested for me. I'm going to shave this shit. It was requested from me by uh, uh, Gary Morris and he said, What are your favorite Silent Hill games in order? Now, really, I mean, you know what number one is going to be. It's going to be Silent Hill 2. I'll spoil that shit right away. If you're new here, I have so many videos on Silent Hill you can go back to. What I think was happening here is that Gary wanted me to talk about Silent Hill. Because that's why the majority of you are here. Uh, and you know what? I thought about it and I will do a, a, I will do another series of videos. Because I've, I've done a series of videos where I've gone in depth about each one that I've actually played all the way through. That's why you don't really see anything about Downpour because... I can't, I can't do downpour. Um, it's too glitchy, but we'll talk about that when I, when I, uh, when I get in there. So we'll talk about my worst Silent Hill to the best. The one Silent Hill that I do not own is Book of Memories because that is not a Silent Hill game and I will not buy it. But Craig, you won't buy it because it's only on Vita and you don't have Vita. Yes, we, we have Vita. Um, I will not buy that game. I will not buy a fake ass fucking wannabe dungeon crawler. Uh, version of Silent Hill. They've done enough to drag the, the fucking series in the mud. I won't do it. So, first and foremost, we're going to do two honorable mentions because PT doesn't count anymore, but I still have PT. And any time you guys want me to do a video on PT, I still have it upstairs, and it looks glorious upscaled, by the way, with uh, the PlayStation Pro. Uh, so anytime you guys want to see that, we'll do that. Also, this is a nice collection piece. I mean, this is not something... I collect Silent Hill. It's a nice uh, collection piece thing. Uh, this right here, Silent Hill Experience. It's not a game. It's it's like I said, it's a collector's item. It literally is. It's the Silent Hill Museum. That's what it is. It's got videos and you know concept art and and all these great things, interviews, blah 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 about the about the series. So I mean, you can find everything that's on here on YouTube, anyways. But it's just a nice thing to have in the collection. All right. Um, so let's get to it. My wife doesn't know I'm doing a video, so I'm waiting for her to pop out the door and be like, Who's talking in the basement? Where's my husband? He's dead. And then she has to go on her own Silent Hill adventure. So, let's start with the ones that I like the least. And then we'll... I'm missing one. I'm... <laughs> I didn't put them in order, I just grabbed them. Because I was gonna... You know, I have I have so many copies of Silent Hill 2 that I was gonna be like... You know, just show you my favorite version of Silent Hill 2, but I, I can't do that, guys. I can't do that. All right, so we'll go with the, the three, the Climax ones. That's what I like to call them, even though it's not even, these ones weren't done by Climax, right? This Just this one, Havoc, Havoc Engine. All right, so, ready? <laughs> this, is a, this is least to favorite. Silent Hill Downpour. I got excited about it. You want to know why? I got, I did get a little excited about it. And if they called this anything but Silent Hill, I think I would show it a lot more appreci appreciation. I think I've actually said that on here a couple times. Um, Silent Hill Downpour was the first of the Silent Hill games that all involvement was gone. Any original person was gone after uh, starting with Downpour. And I think that's why it sucks so bad. Is that they shouldn't have called it Silent Hill. They should have called it something else. There's another game in here that I, I, I feel like that. But uh, I had a lot of glitchy problems on it. And I don't remember if I did a video. I think I tried to stream it when they did it backwards compatible on, on uh, Xbox One. But uh, I had glitchy problems. I restarted the game. Same shit. Uh, a real buggy game for me. And I guess other people didn't have that problem. But you know what? I didn't have half of the problems that people were crying about uh, um, HD collection. And a lot of other people seem to have it. So... I have no fucking clue. I've had to clear my cache, everything. And it seemed to run a little bit smoother on Xbox One. But the game itself, to me, was not Silent Hill. I don't know. I'm not going to go too in-depth in it because I told you I'm going to do a series of the in-depthness. And one day I'm going to have to sit down and probably drink a lot and muscle through that game. Um, but it ain't going to be today. No way. All right, so Silent Hill Homecoming. Silent Hill Homecoming, to me, was the last involvement game. Uh, it's the last one that Akira did the music for, which is a huge noticeable difference between the rest of the series and Downpour. And Daniel Lich, I think, is a great composer. I mean, obviously, if you like Dexter, you know his music. You're familiar with it. Dexter music doesn't fit in Silent Hill. It still sounds like Dexter, but, you know. So Silent Hill Homecoming. Um, like I said, Downpour would have been great if it was called something else. So I automatically put it at the bottom of the list because it was glitchy. It's the one I never finished, and I just I can't do it. 
the worst Silent Hill game to me, Silent Hill, like within the name, sharing the name and, you know, properties of the rest of the shit is Homecoming. I think it's terrible. And the sole purpose of it, it wasn't that bad. I think some of the character and creature designs of Homecoming are some of the best in the series, like especially the bosses. Uh, they use Pyramid Head in such a shitty way in this, like they made him the Pyramid Head. Uh, that's one of the endings. Pyramid Head is exclusive to James Sunderland. Don't you dare. Don't you dare try and use him just to be cool. They used him just to be cool. And, and uh, probably bring in more people. Because everyone thought he was cool in the movie. And that was another one I was irritated with. But whatever. Again. Silent Hill Origins wasn't terrible. And Silent Hill Origins on the, uh, the PSP was great. It was great because it was an on-the-go Silent Hill. It wasn't bad. Now we're getting into the games that I actually didn't mind. Uh, I do feel like The Butcher was a bit too much like Pyramid Head, and I, I think the series tried to hang on to him so bad that there was a Pyramid Head in every game, just their own version of it, or just a blatant ripoff of it. Um, I mean, the music was great in Origins. I loved the music, and I loved having it on the go. I have the PS2 version just because I own all the PS2 versions that I can of... Uh, of of all the Silent Hills. And uh, I don't know. It wasn't that bad. I mean. I don't. I think all Silent Hills should be separate. With the exception of 1 and 3. And 1 and 3 is like. A huge gap apart. But I feel like they're trying to retcon things. And they push the cult too hard. And when they push the cult stuff too hard. Which was the same thing in Homecoming. They really take away from like the fabric of what made 2 awesome. Is you didn't need the cult. This stuff was in the background. But you, you didn't need it. They should have made them all separate. And I think they could have done something unique with each game. But they really kept trying to pull back to that cult shit. And I think it mainly has to do with the movie. And you can tell you can tell by the logos, right? The logos change frantically. And Silent Hill 2, 1, and 3, and Silent Hill Experience. No, oh, Silent Hill has it. They, they all have the same logo. And then all of a sudden, the, the, the post-movie games, they all have this fucking the movie logo. And I, I hate it. I hate it. Anyways, let's get into the real good ones, eh? So, whoop, whoop. <laughs> in the original, uh, back in the day, Silent Hill for The Room, I don't care what anybody says, The Room was supposed to be its own game. They went and they attached a Silent Hill name to it because it wouldn't sell. You know how Konami is about money. They attached a name to it. Um, now in retrospect, I do think four was a great game. I think it's the weakest out of the original four that came out, obviously because of where I placed it. But, uh, it's, I don't know, man, it's great. I've, I've, I liked it. Uh, I didn't like the, I didn't really like the aspect of the room. Obviously it's in, in the name of having one room that you then treat as a hub world. And then you go out. Uh, I did like that even though it was a hub world in most games that have a hub, you're safe in the hub, and then eventually you are not safe in that room. It scared the shit out of me. Like, that game did freak me the fuck out. So, I give it kudos for that. Um, Silent Hill started to drift from that point on, in my opinion. Uh, and they just took way too many liberties. Because they took a lot of liberties with the room, and it worked. I mean, they did try and do a little connection between two. And when they start trying to connect games that should be separate and left alone as its own entity, I feel like that's when I fuck up. I'll do a more in-depth video on that. Usually, Silent Hill 4 is one of those games that you don't really appreciate until you get something substantially worse. It's like with the Final Fantasy series. I used to hate 12 until I played 13. <laughs> so, I used to hate Silent Hill 4 The Room uh, until I played Homecoming. That's pretty much how it worked. Uh, this might surprise you because this is where, obviously, you know what number one is, but do you know what three and two are? Three. Silent Hill 3 is my third favorite. And they don't go in order at this point, but Silent Hill 3 is my third favorite. Uh, I was on vacation. I let my friend Gil borrow my PS2, and he went and picked up my pre-order copy of Silent Hill 3, and he played it, and he built up hype. I was in Georgia. I was visiting my sister. He built up the hype for the whole week, and when I got back and I played it, it was, just, it was fucking... Ah, I'm a huge fan of Jacob's Ladder, and there was so much Jacob's Ladder fucking regurgitated into that including the whole opening the whole opening uh i mean not them all sorry the uh the whole train subway station so it was you know at the end of the opening but 
if you've never seen Jacob's Ladder and you want to see a lot of inspiration for Silent Hill, watch Jacob's Ladder. Uh, you'll see it very prevalent in Silent Hill 3. And you'll see it uh, just in James's jacket in Silent Hill 2. But I digress. Silent Hill 3 was great. I like that. Uh, like I said, I, I don't like the whole cult aspect of it. But I do like that they left a considerable amount of time. And they close the loop with Harry. Like, you find out what happens to Harry. Because you know something. You know at the end of any of the endings of Silent Hill 1, it, nothing good was going to happen for him in the future. And, you know, it came full circle. So that was nice. And I felt like that was a good closer. Um, I don't feel like... You know, Bonds have more fun ending, uh, which I think was the canon one, right? There was really no resolution at the end of, of Silent Hill 3 to me. And uh, I know they left it open where it can, like it's something that could continue going on. But I do think it was cool uh, that you had, you know, you got to play up as a play as a grown up Cheryl. And that was uh, that was an awesome thing to me. But uh, that wasn't three. That was... Here's one. This one's going to cause some controversy. Where's the other copy of it? Oh, what did I do? All right, ready? Oh, let's see if anybody missed what these two are. All right? I thoroughly enjoyed this game. I know people that fucking hated the... I have these two. I didn't buy the, the PSP version, but uh, I love this game. I love this game and what it did. This is the first game that traveled off. This is one of the, the logo ones I'm telling you about. You can look at the logos and you can see the difference between them. Um, this is one of the games that wasn't like the originals. But it didn't piss me off. And I feel like if it did piss you off, it's because you didn't play it. The game was great. Um, only because it wasn't Silent Hill. It knew that it wasn't Silent Hill. It, it didn't try and take the place of it. Uh, it's like DMC. You know, I know a lot of people hated it, but if you take it for what it's worth, it's just one new company trying something new uh, and doing their own spin on it. And it's not part of anything like it's that. That's not the official story. This is just one little group of people's take on it. And it was interesting. I like the way they did it. They asked you questions. They did the next scene to pertain to your questions. Uh, you couldn't really fight, which is great because majority of the Silent Hill protagonists are useless people. They're not running around with fucking machine guns. Like when I think of that. I think of of Cheryl with the machine gun in Silent Hill 3. And everyone compl <laughs> complaining about that for the HD remake. And they're like, the machine gun sounds don't appear. She shouldn't have a fucking machine gun. I'm sorry. They're supposed to, not not that she's useless and dainty, but even like, even James or, or even uh, Harry. You know what I mean? They should be struggling with weapons. They're not proficient with weapons. And this one that had Harry, like, you had to run. If you didn't run, you... you we're going to die. Now, on the PS2, it's not such a fantastic game. But on the Wii, with the motion controls, wouldn't you take that whole package into consideration and all the shovelware that was thrown onto the Wii, and then you have a game like Silent Hill where you get to make choices. It's got a little bit of depth to it. It does an alternate version, if you really appreciate Silent Hill, alternate version of these characters that you know and love and, and treasure. And it doesn't change their story. Uh, you know, like I said, it's its own entity. I think it was a great fucking thing i don't know i i personally i'm a huge fan of when someone takes something that you like and they put their own spin on it and you guys can't pretend that you don't like that because you guys have been here for my theory videos for silent hill 2 and people like them resoundingly those are like my most watched and, and liked videos so i don't know if you've never played shattered memories because you know the series started to go downhill it's not that bad uh, play it on the wii it was the best the best way you can play it um, you can still play it on the PS2. It's not as much fun. Motion controls, few and far between where something is fun. That game is fun with it. All right, so second favorite, Silent Hill 1. The one that started it all. The music soundtrack of that game scares the fuck out of me. I love it. That's my favorite soundtrack in any of the games. It's, uh, I get a sneeze. <laughs> I tried to hold that thing in. Don't bless me. Don't do that. Nobody's coming to steal my soul while I'm sneezing. All right, anyways. <laughs> what a dick. Um, Silent Hill 1's one that started it all. And uh, to me, that's the game that dethroned uh, Resident Evil as being scary. So hats off to you. Um, I like the story. The story will never get old. I'm actually currently playing it on my phone, which is awesome. Um, the Silent Hills that I can continuously play over and over again, there's only two. And that's Silent Hill 1 and Silent Hill 2. And those are the games that I can play every year and they don't get bored. They don't get boring to me. So... That's just the way I see it. But, okay. So, 
If you're willing to spring on a bunch of different versions of a game, I, mean, I have HD collection, but uh, that doesn't count. That's just the HD collection. But like, Silent Hill 2. My favorite, obviously my favorite Silent Hill game. My favorite way to play it is right here because it has all the content of the Xbox launch version, but it's on the PlayStation 2, which is the better controller for me at the time. I mean, obviously you can play this now on an Xbox One, I mean, uh, uh, on an Xbox One. I don't know why it's not backwards compatible yet. It's a fucking launch title and the game went platinum. You know what that means? It sold a lot. Um, <laughs> but uh, I couldn't play it that well on a Duke controller and I preferred the PlayStation controller to it. So uh, all the content, you know, this is the rest of streams version, even though it doesn't say it, but some, this is still the best looking version that you can play. But uh, I'm very adamant about if you are buying multiple copies of the game, it's because you like it. Um, you know, obviously my Xbox version and I have two PS2 versions and there's a huge difference because this is not the director's cut and this is essentially the director's cut. They say it right on the back. Uh, they are two different, not two different games, but they are, are they're two different games. <laughs> Let's fucking face it. I love Silent Hill 2. And I know people ask me to do a list of my favorite Silent Hill games in order because you want me to do a Silent Hill 2 video. You guys want me to do a Silent Hill 2 video first? Or do you want me to do all the other games? That's it. That should have been a five minute video, by the way, but I ramble. I can't wait. I listen to these um, after I post them, usually on drives to work. So we'll see what happens. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, let me know which ones you want me to go in more depth about. I mean, I don't think I want to waste time on Origins. I don't think I want to waste time on fucking... I might take Homecoming, Origins, Downpour. Um, yeah. And I might just shit down their throat on one video. <laughs> Who knows? So thank you for the idea, Gary. Anybody else have any ideas of other videos you'd like me to do? Leave them in the comments below. Thank you guys for watching.